Hello everyone, thank you for watching. This is going to be my review of the CF Moto C Force 400. CF Moto, they're a fairly recent brand. I know they've been around for a few years, but it appears that they're just now starting to come into their own. I believe this is a 2021 model. I bought it about a week ago. It is a C Force 400. It has a claim 31 horsepower and 24 pound feet of torque. It's a very nice size in my opinion. It has full four-wheel drive with a locking differential, which is something that many ATVs in this class lack. Full metal racks. They've got Polaris bead on that on the standard models at least. Fairly protective brush guard. And a winch plate already installed. Pretty good, ti pretty good tires on it. Nice size tires. Very nice seat. Nice low profile shifter. I always like that. And a very simple yet informative display. A 12, 12 volt port, which is very standard amongst ATVs of this segment, but it also has something that's not so standard, which is USB ports. This one's got a cup holder on it, but that's I don't think that's stock. Um, I'm currently missing this uh, service door. It's just, uh, I'm just going to order that on Amazon. Has a very generous storage compartment in the back. Not quite as nice as your like under rack Polaris storage or some things like that, but it's very, very good size glove box in the back, especially compared to most ATVs that have them in the back. And something you really don't see too often, which is a true two inch trailer hitch receiver. Something else I've really come to love about this ATV is that it has full A-arm suspension and very short axles, which leaves a lot less leverage to break them under, under extreme loads. It also has CV boot protection which you don't see on many ATVs anymore, which I think is crazy, but at least it has them, and adjustable shocks. Now let's take a look under the seat. Taking a look under the seat, I see something which I already really like, which is the massive battery. That is way bigger than what most power sport manufacturers put in their ATVs. Now, something that does not look overly appealing to me is that you actually have to take off two screws to get into the airbox. Well, at least I assume you do. Let's take a look through here. Yep, you have to take you have to take those screws off to get into the airbox, and that is very old, old school. That's how like those old big bears were, and things like that. Instead of just having two clips, I never understand that. But I do like that the snorkels ran pretty high. I wish it was um, ran up kind of like how the sportsmen's are up through here, but. You know, that's high and there's not going to be dust in it. You shouldn't have to worry about water too much under normal circumstances. I know some of us don't, uh, don't always stay in normal circumstances. So, looking at the display, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it's a very simple display. It just shows your miles, your mile per hour, fuel gauge over there, and heat gauge right there. It also shows your two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive differential. See, it comes into four there. And then as we switch to differential lock, it puts a cross in the middle. Back to two. Looking up here at the controls, it's very simple and somewhat familiar to other ATV models. To switch from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, you simply just press the red button, and then to switch into differential lock, you pull the slide to the right, then you push out on that button. And then to go back, same thing reverse. So the left side of the handlebars has something that's uh, relatively strange. It's pretty normal with its uh, headlights being down one to running lights and then up one to off and then high beam and low beam is a little weird, but you know, something to get used to. Uh, start button, kill switch, and a horn. That is something I've never seen on an ATV before, but I assure you it works. And considering that the very strange yet innovating horn button is on the spot where typically you'd have a reverse override button right there, it actually has a lever that takes the place of it right here. So taking a look at the transmission, there's a few things I really like. I like how it's low profile and out of the way, kind of reminds you of those old Arctic cats, the, you know, the golden era, 2000, maybe the year 2000 to 2005 was really a great time for Arctic cat. So it's nice low profile out of the way. It's also on the left side of the machine, which is awesome because you can keep your right hand on the throttle and move quicker. It also has 
park reverse neutral high and low which i think every machine should but a lot of them neglect to even put a park on the transmission and instead they just have an emergency brake up here this one just so happens to have both i know we all love to use these things for fun but as far as working goes it claims to be able to haul 88 pounds on the rear rack 44 pounds on the front rack and tow 620 pounds from the two inch receiver we will be testing these things later so with all that said, I think we've spent enough time talking about this machine. I think it's time to take it to the trail. All right, now that we have the helmet on, I think we ought to fire this thing up. Fuel pump takes a little longer to prime than most um, machines in this class, but we'll give it a second. Sounds like a tank, especially for a 400 put her in drive fairly smooth takeoff so far suspension's a little tough but I believe it's set to a um, tighter setting so that you can take a little body roll out of the machine Makes pretty good power off the off the low end. I think the mid range may be a little lacking, but we'll experiment with it more. You could certainly keep up a good trail pace, though. Yeah, I feel like you could reasonably easily keep up with all your sportsman 570s and 450s other machines like that that engine braking is fantastic yeah that's great didn't even have to touch the brake you yeah, see it just lacks a little bit coming into the mid-range Now this is going to be a little rougher terrain. We're going to throw her in low and we're going to throw it into four wheel drive. Across another dried out creek. They're everywhere. The logs on this incline are a little rough. Handled it easily though. Now for the hill climb. And it handled that very safely and easily in my opinion. Now we'll take her back out of four and we'll put her back in high. We'll hit the trail. It's actually not that hard to break the back back end loose on this thing which you know you kind of that's something you kind of worry about with 400 class machines is how much power they're really going to have but this one seems to do really well just as I suspected there's very little body roll part of that is being relatively low to the ground I believe it only has nine and a half inches of ground clearance as opposed to Polaris is 11 and a half inches and I believe Can-Am at 11 inches or 10 and a half something like that and the other part of that's probably due to the stiff suspension and just very good engineering overall but even that said with the stiff, stiff suspension it's really not that bad of a ride it beats Honda 10 to 1 Engine braking going down the hill is doing fantastic. Slowing you down to a crawl. That's very nice and safe. And that's in high gear. 
and low gear would do even more for you. We might have caught air there. <laughs> See how the turning radius is. Uh, not too impressive on the turning radius. Not probably not as bad as Honda, but not as good as Polaris either. But once again, you could keep up a fantastic trail pace. Like you, you'd be beating Hondas, Hondas 10 to 1. Even if you want to make the case for the Rubicon, I really think this would outpace the Rubicon on almost any trail. It also feels very accurate when you're steering. So we'll use this turn for an example. Slow down a little and hit it. That steering feels very accurate and very safe. Nothing about this machine gives you a squirrely feeling. You can round these corners very quickly. And this is just in two wheel drive. And I'm not really even have to touch the brake. I'm just letting the engine brake and do the work for me. Across the creek. Well, what used to be a creek, I should say. Something else I've already noticed, which is very nice, is it's a very good ergonomic feel. The handlebars are very nice distance apart. It's a very nice seating position. The thumb throttle is really nice. Let the engine brake and put in work. And that's a very rough trail. And it handled it extremely well. We'll break the back into it loose again. It does not take too much effort to do that. Better let off, we're getting squirrely. <laughs> but that's more because of the trail than the bike. The bike itself handled extremely well. So as far as the overall ride quality and handling and smoothness, I was very impressed, especially for the price point. Now, something I'm not a huge fan of is, again, the ground clearance isn't amazing, therefore the two inch receiver is mounted relatively low. So for our towing test, I'm gonna have to get a hitch that rises quite a bit. This ought to do the trick. So even with that hitch that rises quite a bit, we're still a little too low on the trailer, but that's gonna be just fine for today's test. Something I noticed which I don't like is that it does not have safety chain hookups, like the Polaris's do. I know that's kind of a rare feature, but it's something I wanted to point out. Something else that's noticeable is that the back end is sitting down quite a bit compared to other machines, like the Polaris's. The front end's up in the air quite a lot more, the back end's down a lot more. We'll see how it tows and steers in the test.
So we're going to put it in low gear, four wheel drive. Taking off certainly isn't a problem, it's hauling it just fine. So we'll see how it does down the hill. Part of the reason why I have a four wheel drive is like this will get all four wheel engine braking. And that's something you definitely need for a test like this. I'm sure this hill looks steeper in real life than on camera, but it's a reasonable hill for sure. Now the next one we're going to be going up steeper than the one we're going down currently. Doing well so far, we're not slipping out, which means it's a very good four-wheel drive system. And we're not really making the motor work too hard. Now for our next test, which I definitely believe is an important one, we're going to see how well you can control the load on this machine while backing down this hill. I know it does look steep on camera, but it is definitely got a little bit of angle to it. And I think it's going to be a very good test. Oh, here comes a cat to say hi. More videos of her on my cat channel. Overall, that was a very safe experience. Um, the, bra the brakes weren't slipping out. It's a very heavy machine, which it's got that on a lot of others for sure. And um, over overall, it did really well. We weren't really pressing the motor, doing any of it. And I know this isn't a giant load, and it's certainly not what I would tow with my sportsman. I'd be towing a stack of wood piled up to here. But, you know, it's a, it's a nice test run for a smaller class machine with a little less towing capacity, which definitely shows with how bad the rear end lowers when you put a load on it but overall you know i think it did really great on this part well overall i think this review went very well i hope you guys have enjoyed it i've certainly enjoyed messing around with this bike and this gets a few views i definitely look forward to making more videos in the future just gonna give it another quick drive real quick because it's so fun Let's take it up this trail, it's a little rougher terrain. Handle so well. Oh, missed the turn. <laughs> That's okay. It is an all-terrain vehicle after all. Something I really like about it even though it's a small motor and everything and it's not really a racing bike you can cut you can still come out of corners with a lot of authority a lot more than some of the other machines in this class like your honda rancher 420 it's uh just doesn't have the power something like this has
I wonder if we can drive through there. That'd be a good test. We'll put her in low and we'll put her in a four wheel drive. No. What the hell was that? Whatever. Weird, uh, weird transmission sounds. I don't think we're gonna make that, fellas. We'll have to back up and change our strategy just a little. Oof, up on three wheels. Yeah, you know, that wasn't too difficult. I wish I had the tripod set up. That would have been a fun angle. Put her back in two. Actually, let's uh, let's run it in four wheel drive on the trail and see how it um, see how it steers in comparison to two wheel. Because with some level of aggression, you might have to have it in four wheel drive. Yeah, it's definitely not quite as loose. Definitely takes more effort. Now you do have to keep in mind this is not a power steering equipped model. A, power, a model with power steering I'm sure would do quite a bit better. Definitely takes a little bit of your turning radius out too. I can't get over how nice the engine braking is. It's just as nice as Polaris. Hit the back brake. Even then you don't really even need to. See if we can make this turn in four-wheel drive. That is a no. Yeah, um, for driving in four-wheel drive is definitely doable, but it's not nearly as nice. That's that's how I should say it. Not not as nice as Polaris's all-wheel drive. You know, you don't even really notice a difference driving that. But this also isn't a nine thousand dollar machine, so it certainly depends on a lot of things. So, final thoughts. Is this a player sportsman? No, it's it's not. It doesn't ride as well, it doesn't handle as well. However, it handles extremely well and rides extremely well. And especially at the price point, I would 100% recommend this machine. It's not extremely hard to work on. Changing the oil is pretty easy. Overall, it's, it's a really good machine that I think is built very well. I love the two inch trailer hitch receiver. I wish they just made the machine itself a little bit higher but it has a great working capability. I know the towing capacity is a little low compared to other machines, but it handled that trailer really well. The rack capacity is fantastic. I've had stacks of cinder blocks on them. I think that works great. I like the placement of the radiator. I think overall it's a nice machine and certainly worth the much lower price point than other machines in its class. I think this company is really gonna be going places. This one has 600 miles on it and to my knowledge, it's never had an issue. But, you know, I know that's not a huge amount of miles, but I've also seen some machines blow up at 600 miles. So it just depends. But, yes, I would 100% recommend this machine. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. This was my review of the CF Moto C-Force 400.